Hey everybody, hope you're doing okay today. Uh, I wanted to take a look today at some poetry. This is uh, some work we've been doing in our classes recently, uh, talking specifically about how to add emotion to your poetry without just naming the emotion. How do you show that emotion? So this is a poem we're working with uh, called Domestic Work 1937 by Natasha Trethewey. So you can see I've already gone through, I've marked it up for some things that caught my attention that I wanna talk about today. So let's read it quickly and then we'll talk about what I've marked. All week, she's cleaned someone else's house, stared down her own face in the shine of copper-bottomed pots, polished wood, toilets she'd pull the lid to, that look saying, let's make a change, girl. But Sunday mornings are hers, church clothes starched and hanging, a record spinning on the console, the whole house dancing. She raises the shades, washes the rooms and light, buckets of water, octagon soap. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Windows and doors flung wide, curtains two-stepping forward and back, neck bones bumping in the pot, a choir of clothes clapping on the line. Nearer, my God, to thee. She beats time on the rugs, blows dust from the broom like dandelion spores, each one a wish for something better. <clears throat> so my main question that I have for my class is what emotions are really playing out here? And beyond that, I wanna take some time to just kind of break it down and deconstruct it. So in class, we've been talking about unwriting, where you take a piece of writing and you just strip away all the stuff that makes it fancy, all the luxury pieces, all of the things that makes it super valuable and interesting, just take it away so you can understand the basic idea of what's going on. It's almost like discovering the plot of poetry. Not all poetry has a story or a plot, but a lot of them do. And so if you can get that part figured out first, then you can see how all the other pieces add to it. So in this case, we have someone cleaning and working someone else's house. This is somebody who works as a house cleaner for a living. We know by the title that this is several decades ago. Um, but this is somebody who, as they're doing this, this idea of staring down at their own face, um, they're contemplative, they're thinking about stuff. So they clean someone else's house, they're thinking about it, they're like, ugh, this is, this is not great. It's not good, we need to change. And then on the weekends, she gets to clean for herself. She gets to take time to be in her own space, her, her time to take care of her own needs. And that experience is great. It's the way she would want it to be. That's what I see as the basic plot of, of this poem. So now we can go through and look at the rest of this stuff. In the first stanza, we have the imagery of things that are shined and polished, this idea of cleaning um, something. And in a lot of ways, it's similar to the imagery we get later on that we are still washing the rooms and there's still buckets of water and soap and things like that. But it should be fairly obvious that the feel and the emotion in this first stanza is completely different than the feel and the emotion in the rest of the poem. So what makes the difference? Mostly in the first stanza, there's no life in it. It's someone else's house. That idea of staring down has, has some negative connotation, uh, both the direction down, but also just staring down seems almost condescending, like she's judging herself, uh, maybe. But even these moments here where we talk about things that are being cleaned, there's no joy in it. It's just factual. The shine of the pots and the polished wood, nothing special, nothing fancy. We get this great transition line of let's make a change. And then when we get down here, that change is evident immediately. First, everything I've highlighted in green is something that touches or relates to God or spirituality or church or Sunday um, and those ideas. And we see that happen immediately, but Sunday mornings are hers. And so the association that, you know, so many people have like Sunday morning is, is like a church time. We see that this becomes almost like a spiritual exercise. Now I can see a potential problem saying, oh, hey, here's a poem about a woman who cleaning her house is a spiritual thing and how that could be really leaning strangely into different 
gender norms and stuff like that. I think there's something deeper here than that, though. This is something where in, in one place she's working for someone else and now she's doing it for herself. She gets to do it on her own terms. She gets to do it in the way that she wants to do it. And so all these blue markings here have to do with music and dancing. And, and ultimately, in this case, it's the way she wants to do it. So she gets to listen to her music and do things her way. She gets to connect with her own living space. Um, there's something about possession and ownership that happens here in this last two thirds of the poem. And so if I started going with different connotations and I'm looking at just the green stuff, Sunday and church clothes and godliness and nearer my God to thee, I'm getting a sense of yes, reverence. Um, also a sense of, like I said, spirituality. But even if I look down here at nearer my God to thee, that's the name of a hymn. So there is something kind of spiritual happening here. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, a phrase that um, has been around forever, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Um, but in this case, what she's doing, again, for herself is, is some maybe some kind of connection between herself and, and the spiritual. I really like the blue stuff here. A record spinning and the whole house dancing, two-stepping. Uh, the neck bones uh, bumping and, and the choir and, and beating time to the rugs. There's so much energy here. And again, this is why this section is so much different from that first stanza, because that first stanza is just sterile in its facts and there's no life or energy to it. But because we have such an energy here and we have the reverence of her cleaning combined with the energy and livelihood of the dancing and clapping and, and beating time and choirs and everything else, there's something about taking time for yourself and taking care of yourself and your needs and, and, and your stuff that is rejuvenating and it's different than working for somebody else. And so if I want to talk about emotion in this poem, I mean, there's certainly joy down here. I think that's probably the dominant emotion as I, as I look through the last chunk of this poem. There's a lot of joy. But again, when we write poetry it's cooler and better and more interesting when you don't just say she felt joy while she cleaned her house. Cause that's the boring way. That's the unwritten way of doing it. That's after you've stripped all the nice, good, fun stuff away. But instead by putting in this imagery with the record spinning and the house dancing and washing rooms and light, those images through connotation bring us closer to understanding like, Oh, there's happiness here. There's joy here. Um, and I really like it. There's a lot that goes on here that I think is very cool. This idea of domestic work, like I said, this is several decades old where if we wanted to go back to like, really, this is just like a weird gender norm about women loving cleaning their house. And, um, but there's something different here because the likelihood of a woman having work in the 1930s doing something like this was so prominent. Like this is probably a very real feeling for a lot of women at that time and, and still for a lot of women today dealing with other people's messes and other people's work but the chance to like really do something for yourself and to take care of yourself and have that ownership and that pride about what you have and what you can take care of I think is really powerful